was, well, maybe, <laughs> yeah, maybe about this big right here. Uh, very small, 10, 10, uh, uh, 10 feet by 10 feet. And uh, uh, in that space, we put up our computers and we showed our games. And 25 years ago today, uh, Ken Williams, who was the founder of Sierra Online, uh, with his wife Roberta came walking up to us and they said, oh my god, Roberta, look at these games. These look just like your games. Well, <laughs> that was uh, no coincidence because those were the games that I bought. Uh, and those were the games that my son and I played together and that uh, we actually emulated when we tried to do our stuff. Well, how does that affect you? Well, <laughs> what it means is that inadvertently, I mean, I didn't have any great insight into this. I just lucked into it. I had created a product that fit that publisher's product line, and so uh, he could publish those games because they looked like his, and uh, people would say, oh, those must be Sierra games, and therefore uh, I got in as a, a game designer with Sierra and uh, did that for, uh, well, let's see, I, I, I'm skipping ahead a little bit. We uh, sold our rights to our company, and then in the spring, I quit my job as a teacher and went to work full time for Ken Williams. At the same time, Ken obtained a Sierra. And by the way, Ken Williams and Roberta Williams are synonymous with the word Sierra, as far as I'm concerned, because they started the company on their kitchen table. They literally, um, Ken wrote some code, and uh, Roberta wrote some games, designed some games, and came up with the ideas. Uh, she was the advertising person. She took magazine ads from other magazines and cut out the letters and pasted them together with glue <laughs> on paper and that's how they made their magazine ads and I mean this is an incredibly simple time back then but they started that company from a kitchen table and they built it to be a company worth a billion dollars when it was bought out. Changed slightly uh, but Ken was still able to keep things together until one day in about 1995 or 96, one of his board members called him up on a Monday morning and said, I'm going to put forth a tender offer for your stock today at 50% over what it's selling for. Uh, and now to translate that into normal people talk, what that means is the stock was selling for 30 bucks a share. This guy was going to offer $45 a share to take control of. It's what's called a hostile takeover. And he took over control of the company, and the first thing he did was take the couple of people, Ken and Roberta, who grew the company from their kitchen table, and send them off and get rid of them. And then he took me and Jane Jensen and uh, Scott Murphy and Mark Crow and all the other people who had done games and were successful, and they got rid of all of us. And they went down a different path, uh, which, you know, is a good idea, if it works, and um, but in this case, it didn't work. And the worst part of it was that the company that bought us lied. They were crooks. They were criminally lied. They criminally lied. So much so that, and I can say that without fear of being sued. But are there any lawyers in the house? <laughs> uh, I can say that because they were convicted by the court system in America of lying to uh, the public and lying to the securities people and all the officials in the government and everything else, and they are now in jail. So they actually took this company away that was this lifeblood of this family and all of us, and they not only turned it into crap, but they also did it illegally. And it just pisses you off. You know, it just makes you so sad. But Unfortunately, that's what happened, and the company then started this death spiral. You know, if you've seen those airplanes when they uh, lose control and they start doing this, and, you know, it, the, you know it's inevitable, uh, but you just keep hoping that somehow they're going to pull it out. And uh, I was there for oh, about this much of it, you know, about up, up here at the top, and I watched as all the good programmers and all the great artists and all the creative designers and stuff were either thrown overboard or jumped out without a parachute and hoped to land at some other company and work for them. And then the people that remained on board were pretty much dead weight, which made it go faster and faster until finally every project that they did one year uh, was either postponed 
late or canceled. And uh, then they finally shut the doors and they said, you know, we'll just have this word, Sierra, and we'll stick that on a box and that'll be good enough. And so that's the story of the rise and the fall of Sierra Online and also the rise in, well, not, I don't think we fell so much, Margaret, as, as, uh, as the fact that we, we rose with the company and just as I figured out how to write an adventure game. Just as I got good at it, I didn't have the chance to do it anymore. You know, and that was the discouraging part of the whole thing. Was I felt like along the way, all you know, all of you have I know have played these games, uh, and I'm sure you wonder. In fact, people have asked me the last few days, "Why the hell did you do this?" <laughs> I got stuck on this for so long, and oh, I hated it when you did what I didn't like when I died all the time. Well, you know, we didn't know what the hell we were doing. We, we were trying our best. We did the best we could. We didn't know. There was no course in how to design an adventure game. There were no, you know, a, 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 a body of knowledge that you could study. We did. You know, we played the other games. We played Lucas games. We played Infocom games. We played all the stuff that we could find, and uh, we said, oh, I like that, oh, I'll steal that idea, yeah, I'll use that, and, you know, wouldn't it be fun if we did this? That, that was, uh, that's pretty much how we learned to design games, and uh, it was so funny because when we got down to designing Larry 7, I thought, well, you know, I think I finally know what to do with this, I, I think I could do this, and I was really proud of the, the design for that game, and then suddenly it was like, oh, yeah, well, I guess that's over, so, but at least I know I know that I know what I can do. So, what do you think about Larry and Magna Cum Laude? Well, oh, God, <laughs> you know, it, it was like getting a videotape from your son's kidnappers. <laughs> <laughs> On the one hand. You know, you're glad to see he's still alive. <laughs> but on the other hand, uh, look, look what they've done to him. <laughs> uh, it, it was a, it's an even uglier story than than what I want to go into here because along the way of development of that title, of many people at Sierra realized things were going badly and they would contact people or contact me and they'd say, Al, do you want to get involved? Do you want to help? Can you do something? And I would always say, yeah, sure, I'd love to. Um, and But by the time it got up in management high enough that uh, they realized there is trouble and that maybe I could help, it was too late for me to do anything. And instead what the deal they offered me was that if I uh, they would give me some thousands of dollars if I wouldn't say anything bad about it. And I was like, well, you know, I may be a whore, but I'm not that cheap a whore. You know? <laughs> I, I'm not gonna, you know, I won't do that. So, so um, you know, there were parts of the game that uh, I would have been proud to have written. Um, there were some funny scenes in there that I thought were brilliant. And, uh, 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 but oh my God, the rest of it was just a horrible mess, wasn't it? So, I, I, on the one hand, I really think that they tried some new things. And, and the fact of using Larry's nephew or something, well, that's, that's not a bad idea. I mean, that kind of brings him up to date and makes him a young guy again instead of being an old part. So that, that's, that's okay, but it was just the way it was done. It just was done so badly. I mean, I remember when I saw the title of it, I thought, Magna Cum Laude. Oh, there's a joke there. No. Ah, no, there was no joke. It wasn't Magna Cum Laude. You know, it wasn't, there was no, there was, there was nothing. They could have done something with the, the, even the time. And then I thought, well, Larry Lovage. Oh, there's a joke there. I guess I'm just missing it. Larry Lovage. It's like a Larry, Lo no, there's no joke there. <laughs> and and it, it, it kind of went on like that and on. So, um, yeah, so on the one hand, I guess I'm happy that, that uh, the game, uh, the, that the characters I created continued on. On the other hand, I, I sure wish they did a better. They had done a better job with them.